Hello, this is Lisa from Look Cooking Rubber Stand. Have you watched the last tutorial? The last tutorial I was using the Fleet and Fly stamp set and matching die set to show you how to create your own pattern, uh, sorry, wrapping paper. So uh, this is uh, the project. And then, so today I am actually going to use the same stamp set to show you how to make a Lisa Shaker card, kind of unique. And uh, also, I would like to show you how can you create your own seal, um, what do you call this one? The wax seal? Yeah, with the hot glue stick. So, that's started. Okay, so if this is the first time, if, if this is the first time you visit Local King YouTube channel, welcome. This is the channel that Lisa, me, aka Sausage Finger, to share with you all the awesome stamping techniques and the great tips and the list of ideas. So every tutorial, I'm trying to show you something that I think is a great idea and something that you might don't know and i like to share with you. So today's tutorial, and I am going to use the same stamp set and the same matching die and the same background. So we're gonna use at least a flip and fly stamp set and the matching die set and uh, the words background, the words background. And then this is going to be our this month's special. So it's a stamp and die cut all together, only for $34.99 plus free shipping. So that's a really good deal. And make sure you subscribe to Local King's YouTube channel. Sometimes um, I do offer a great promotion for our YouTube viewers only. So today's tutorial is actually something pretty simple, but something unique you will like to know. And uh, the material list is actually pretty simple. I'm going to show you how you can use the Local King's metric marker. Um, use it as a watercolor. And uh, also use the die cut to create your window instead of that boring rectangle window, right? So, and also I like to share with you how you can make this uh, wax seal with a hot glue. Actually, let's start with that first because it kind of need a little bit time. So what you can do is, uh, I prefer, I don't want to just, uh, I kind of want to um, reuse this seal again and then again. I don't want to permanently glue there. So what I do is I just grab a piece of thick cardstock. Um, this is just left over. Actually, I'm going to use a little bit small piece one. This one I can still use for something else. So just a, a thick cardstock um, that you can hold that hot glue. And then you are going to preheat the glue. Okay, so this is the glue gun. And then uh, I have this black glue stick. Um, I just did a little bit of research on Amazon. You can find it. Uh, I think I bought my hot glue stick from Michaels years ago. I have no idea how many years. Okay, so when you want to do this, most of the people they use the wax and the burning it and the dripping the wax on top and then you use kind of metal seal, right? Do you know that you can use your rubber stamp? Remember, rubber stamp, not the clear stamp. If you use your clear stamp, you're gonna ruin your stamp for sure. So rubber stamp only. Please, rubber stand only, okay? If you use a rubber stand, if you follow my instruction, trust me, they will be fine. Even you stamp on the hot glue, and then after you peel off, they are still work like a brand new. But you got to remember, rubber stand is very important. Don't ruin your stamp and send me an email and say, at least I, you know, I follow your tutorial, I'm ruining my clear stamp. Uh, 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 rubber stand only. Okay, so, I have my rubber stamp here. You know, rubber stamp is actually baked with uh, 110 degree, so they can kind of hold the heat very well. Okay, if you would like to know how I make all the local King rubber stamp, leave me a comment. I maybe do a tutorial to show you a tool of my um, warehouse, how I create all the local King rubber stamp from the beginning to the end. So leave me a comment if you want to know. Okay, so I am going to, you got to preheat your glue gum and they kind of need to warm up a little bit. And then I try to use a clear one. It doesn't really work. Uh, let me see if I have the clear one. 
I think I put, oh, actually I do. Okay, so I'm going to do it first and I show you my boo-boo, okay? So the black one works much better. And uh, so you're going to just put a big, a uh, little bit like a puddle here, okay? So start from the middle, let it run. Try to make a like a uh, nickel size. And then you don't have to work fast. Take your time. Okay, make sure. Okay, and I'm gonna unplug my hot glue because I only need one. Okay, and my hot glue, because my last glue stick was a, like a gold with a little glitter on top. So when I put my, hmm, this lighting is really, I have to reset my lighting. Don't like this lighting. Okay, you can see. So in my hot glue, I actually have a little glitter on top. Okay, so here, and then this technique is not good to, to work with like a big image, okay? Some maximum a quarter size is good enough. You don't want to do too big. And then you don't want to use a color block. I'm going to explain to you why. And then you are going to gently just put that one. Ooh, be careful. A little bit, it's a little bit too hot. Okay, so. And then you're going to just push down a little bit. Like this. Okay, be careful. Your rubber can touch the glue, but not your foam. Okay? The rubber is baked with a 310 degree. It's a very, it, it can hold the heat, but the foam is not. So try to just press the rubber inside that melting hot glue and uh, just leave the foam alone. Don't touch the foam because you're going to ruin the foam. And then I'm going to leave it, just let it dry and uh, wait until I finish my tutorial and we're going to peel off together. So that's the first great tip I know. So I'll show you. This is the clear uh, glue stick. And then when I make this one, I ink with a Versa, Versa fine. And then I, because my stamp was holding with a it was on the acrylic block, and when I kind of stamped it, it kind of sink it. So if you can't find a black glue, you just use the clear glue you have. You can still make a kind of unique stuff. And then I kind of stamping on some sentiment too. And then this is the other hummingbird. You don't really see well. So the best result, it was black, is um, if you can find a glue, uh, red glue stick, I think that will work like a wax too. So remember, got to have a small image, a little butterfly, a little letter, or uh, ladybug, dragonfly. I have a lot of small those kind of um, stand I can use that you can use and I found out is kind of interesting and uh, I will show you by the end what it look like. So this is like a little butterfly. It's really cute, right? Okay, so that's the first part of the uh, tutorial was showing you how to make your own wax seal. I think it's a pretty unique, right? You don't need anything to it, just need a glue, glue gun, glue stick. And then let's move to our second part of the tutorial. So every tutorial I try to share something I think is a great idea. If you think that's a great idea too, give me a thumb up, not a finger, thumb up. And then leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I hear from you more. Encourage me to make more tutorial. Have you find out I don't have a tutorial recently? Because I don't feel I'm encouraged. So leave me a comment. Give me a thumb up. Share this awesome tutorial on the Facebook with your friend. Let me know. So that will make me feel better and keep creating more and more. Sometimes like non-stop because I, every time I receive your feedback, I just say, I got to offer more. So now let's start the second part of a tutorial. Okay, so materialist, I am actually used the watercolor cardstock and this is a Ken Stone's watercolor cardstock I got from my coast. And I did a review for all the paper, which one is it, which paper is good for what. If you um, have some questions, just make sure you watch that tutorial. So the foundation card is actually um, 10 by 7. So it's a kind of big card. The reason I'm doing this card because uh, if you watch my previous tutorial, you probably know the reason why I make a larger card recently because I accidentally ordered a lot of uh, envelope and then I was going to use for storage the die cut, but I found out they are valid, they are not plastic. 
So that's kind of disappointing, but that's okay. So this is the following is awesome, and uh, so we're gonna do that. And so this is a five by seven. So we are going to have a four point seventy five by six point seventy five, a little bit smaller, like this. Okay, and then we're gonna stamp. So I am going to use the Versafine. I just love a Versafine because a Versafine is just the color is just like a dark in the solid. Okay, if you have a purchase a set of these uh, fleet and fly, be careful these uh, um what I say the rope or the wire. Okay, because when we're trimming it, it's kind of like a wiggly, and then you got to make sure they are like a straight. Otherwise, when you try to die cut, they won't light up. And then when I um, put my uh, rubber stain on the color block, I try to make a parallel line because I don't want to cook an image, right? Okay, I'm going to ink my Versafine. Okay. So nice in ink. Okay, and I'm going to bring, uh, bring my from. So the Kingston paper they have a both side. One side is a little bit uh, picture. One side is more, uh, much smooth. And then remember, I don't want to have a crooked image. So um, make sure when you stamp that you are guiding with your acola block, not with your rubber stamp. And then you can put it right in the middle, but I'm going to just put it a little bit on the left side. Give a nice push, push. And then what you can do is you can, what a beautiful image. You can seal, seal it with a clear embossing powder if you want to. So I am going to just... Uh, so you gotta make sure it's dry before you move to the next step. I'm going to just die cut it. Okay, so I have uh, die cut my bird feeder first and the uh, one of the hummingbird. I'm going to just leave on the side and uh, I'm going to show you how to do the coloring. So I'm going to use this die cut as my shaker card's window. And then here is actually one piece die cut. So you die cut it, um, they kind of fall off. But because I want to use it as a window, I kind of find out if I put the piece, that piece die cut back, it looks better. Okay, so I'm going to just put it like that piece of, um, just like a piece of puzzle and I'm just use a regular white glue, kind of seal it. So, okay, just do like that. Okay, put a little bit glue here. The white liquid glue, glue is much better because they can reach the area that the tape cannot reach. Okay. And then we are going to um, kind of, I'm going to use a brush. Okay, so I'm going to just use a brush, kind of flatting that blue, not blue, the glue. But the only one thing you got to remember after you use your brush for the glue, you are going to make sure you clean your brush with water, okay? If you don't do once when they become hardened, goodbye brush, you got to buy the new one. So that's going to be very painful. So I'm going to just uh, dip in mine, make sure I wash my brushes. Okay, and then I have a piece of acetate here. Okay, I'm going to just seal the window those white glue is, is awesome. And then um, they dry clear. So you can kind of just press a little bit. So I seal the window, right? And then I am actually going to stamping my background first. Okay, that's my background. And I'm going to find my hummingbirds here. 
So I am actually going to just decorate the background. You can use any background you have. I am going to just use this white, uh, blah, 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 yellow cantaloupe. Okay, rubbing it. And you can do it, do this before you put that piece of acetate on top. But it doesn't matter because those are just a regular dye base, right? So you can easily wipe off. And then I find out it's uh, too plain. I am going to just uh, stamp a little bit brown color. Get brown color. So yellow brown. And because of these stamps that come with the tree hummingbird, right? So I am going to just uh, sometimes when you stamp, you can do a little bit off the page. It doesn't have to be like a full image, you know, that makes it more interesting. What a beautiful <laughs> stamp set. Who designed it, I wonder? Okay, so do leave. Do this. Rub, rub, tap, tap. Okay, I think that's a pretty, 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 pretty. Pretty, pretty already. Pretty, pretty. And then we are going to just use the magic mushroom. Okay, just keep a little touch. Oh, that's my front page. Please watch my tutorial. I promise I be behave myself. I don't show you too many different kinds of stamp. Just, you know, have you watched the last tutorial? That was a seven different project with the same set. Because I received an email from a few of you guys say, you guys are scared, afraid to watch my tutorial because uh, every tutorial I make, it makes you want to have it. And then I'm putting you in the trouble. That's not what I want to do. So I try to stay with the one set. How's that? That doesn't put you in the trouble. So that's my foundation uh, foundation card. And I think it's a very, very pretty. And then I am going to, would you like to learn how to color those uh, stamp image with markers? I'm going to show you. If you find it's boring, what you're going to do is fast forward. So I like to share with all the great tips with you guys. Some people, they like to learn how to do the coloring, right? So I'm going to just show you a little bit about the mixing the color. So this is what I like to do. I always cut my image first before I coloring, spend the time on top. The reason is, if I accident when I do the die cut, if I didn't line out the die cut, uh, all the hard work for the coloring go down to the drain. So I like to cut uh, cut first, so that way I know I have a perfect image for coloring. Okay, to be able to do use the local king's magic marker as a water color, you are going to need one block. Okay, so that's going to be your um, coloring palette. Okay. And then those markers, okay, I have a few um, customers send me an email say these are, I bought a brand new markers. They are, they are too dry, the color is very pale. These markers, since we start selling these markers, we sold over 50,000 box marker. The most of the time people have problem because they are too moisture. That's why I always tell them be gentle, only one layer. So how do you know your marker is good? Okay, here is a tip to check how you find out your marker is good. So if you bought a marker, you're not happy, okay, you think quality is not good, send me an email, we give you the full refund, even include the shipping fee. That's how confidence that we uh, we have for our marker. Because those markers, you don't want to return it. They will last for a few years. You can uh, actually refill with the waters. Just to check my tutorial, there's a tutorial to show you how to refill the marker with uh, water, but don't do it until unless it's necessary. So first, if your marker can do this, that means your marker is in the perfect shape. If you found out they are pale, 
is not because the marker is not good, it's something wrong with your paper. You want to get the best result, you got to use the right paper and make sure you watch the paper um, review. It explains to you what kind of paper is good for what. If you want to use regular cardstock, when you stamp it, they are going to look pale, but you can fix that. You can stamp two times with the stamp positioner, they, the color will come back, come to a light. So there is nothing wrong with the marker. And then you just want to make sure you do it the right way, right? Okay, so that's something I like to um, you know explain to you. But if you have any question regarding Local Kings product, please don't hesitate to ask me. I usually answer my email pretty fast. Okay, so let's do that. I am going to start with my bird feeder first. So I'm going to use these medium like uh oh, I want to show you. I am going to use the, the light blue. I just put a little bit on the acrylic block. Hmm, what a dirty acrylic block. That's okay. Okay, and then I have a water container, a container on the side, a nice brush. Okay, and just dip with a little bit light color first. You don't need a lot because we just use a little bit. And then you're going to start to color that bird feeder, the glass part. Okay, the trick of a coloring or the water coloring is you try to keep your stroke one direction. Okay, water coloring is hard. Sometimes you see the people do the tutorials. Wow, you know what? Water color, it really needs skill. Okay, but there is a way. So just make sure you follow these instructions. See the way I color one direction. Okay. Once when you color the one direction, you go back to dig a little bit darker color. See, I'm mixing the color, and then just on the side, both side, give a little shadow like a shading, and then kind of just do like this. That's it. So that's the glass part. And then the bird feeder, let's do the red. So, and I'm going to just clean my. See how easy it is? This is the, this marker is so moisture. You use the two color, they create a more different color. So let me show you. Clean your brush all the time. You gotta make sure you have a clean brush. Mix with a little color. We're going to color tip. And remember what I say? One direction, right? one direction if you add more uh, water the color become lighter okay so let's do one direction leave that little flowers one direction okay and then now i'm going to add a little bit darker um uh, orange add a little bit red and then i just do one side Okay, just add a little bit red. Okay, or if you like, you can just color with the markers. Why not? Okay, now I'm going to just have a little bit more red. Okay, so on the bottom of this bird feeder, on the side, okay. If you find all this coloring is boring, you know what, just fast forward it. So I'm going to just use this yellow color, color that flower. Okay, and then that's working on our hummingbird. So the hummingbird, what color is the hummingbird? We kind of want to have a little bit green and a little bit blue, a little bit magenta a little bit purple you don't need a lot okay the watercolor you got to keep your um paintbrush clean all the time so i'm going to just do a little bit green okay oh i have a the other hummingbird here okay and then 
blue with a little bit magenta, they create the purple. Okay, a little bit purple. You can always use the markers. Okay, and then the feather. Just uh, keep coloring one direction. Okay, don't want too much water. Just a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Let's do a little bit red. So, how do you think? Okay, the big one, how about we just do the markers? You can mix, you can mix all. You can start with a little bit yellow and then you can use your brush. Kind of blending that yellow. Okay, let's do a, a little bit orange. And then I can actually mix with the watercolor. If you color directly on the stem with the markers, the color is more solid, is more like a darker. And then because I am using the watercolor, right? Watercolor paper, so they actually can holding hold the blending very well. And then, but remember, you got to use uh, the permanent water resist uh, black impact, right? Otherwise, when you do this, it's all blending smear, like a smear. Okay, so I do a little bit blue. And then you can see the tail pink and blue jump too fast. So I kind of have a um, dry brush, kind of blending a little bit. I think that's pretty much about it. See, you can use your water-based uh, markers as the uh, watercolor. So sometimes we just need a little bit watercolor and then you're too lazy, um, not you, me. I'm too lazy to bring all my color, uh, watercolor stuff out. So how do you like? Okay, if you want to, you know, the we can use the magic mushroom, kind of give it a little bit shading. Okay, soft the edge a little bit. And they are ready to go. So, how are you guys doing hanging there? You know, I used to traveling like almost every week. Probably every month, 15 days, I am on the road traveling. So since this pandemic happening, I kind of, you know, stay at home. In the beginning, I really enjoy it. But now I kind of feel I want to go out. But we can, right? We got to keep the social distance. You know, even though I really want to go traveling, but we got to hang in there, make sure everything is okay. You know, for like uh, try to avoid all the unnecessary traveling for yourself and for your loved one too. So the best thing is, it is stay at home, do the crafting. Bring all the craft material that you bought long time ago, the one that you never opened. Now it's a good time to make a use of that. How about if you have a lot of cards, you don't have a um, friend to send it, how about send it to me? You send me one, I send you one. How's that? Deal? Okay, so if you want to do that, if you like to send me a card, you know, because usually when I make a sample card, when I make a card, it's usually I have to make a sample card for the show. But now I have a lot of tutorial, I made a lot of card. I would like to you to have it. So how about you send me one, I send you one. I think that's a really good deal. If you like to, leave me a comment. i let you know my address and then let's do it. Okay, so that's a coloring and then let's move on to our next step. Okay, see, it's really pretty already. Even though you don't want to make a shaker car, you can make it like an open car, okay? 
So just uh, just to have like a window. That's awesome. Okay, let's go put this one. Oh wait. Okay, so the next what we're gonna do is we want to make sure or um we are going to create a space for um, or bees or like a se sequin. What's that called? This one, what's it called? This is a sequin, right? Okay, Michael B or whatever. So we want to make sure or bird feeder is a perfect line up, right? So this is what you're going to do. You are going to just do this, okay? So here is the back of your car, right? And then we're going to just kind of eyeball it, put it over there. A little hummingbird. If you have a fatty finger like I do, I mean the sausage finger, a tweezer is a good idea. And then I'm going to do the glue. Okay, not too much, just uh, a little bit because we can always use the brushes to smooth it, right? So just do some glue. Okay. Okay, so like this, and then I'm going to just use uh, my brush, kind of brush, kind of remove those glue. It's a little bit hard. Okay, but you got to make sure you have enough glue, kind of flatten those uh, um, glue with your paintbrush. And those paintbrush I bought from the Amazon. It's actually a good deal. So ten for ten dollars, all different kind of size. Okay, remember what you have to do after you use uh, your brush, brush, uh, brush the glue. Got to wash it. Okay, so wash it. Make sure it's washed nicely. Okay, always taking care of your tool. And then I'm gonna use my tweezer to make sure my stamp die cut image is. A, that place. Okay, I have the other piece of acetate. This acetate um, is the same, like these two pieces of acetate is the same size. So I'm just, uh, because this glue is still wet. So if you move a little bit, don't worry, you can easily kind of shave a little bit, right? So that's what it looks like. Great tip, isn't it? So that's how we get a perfect line up. Okay, now we are going to create. You can wait until the glue is completely dry and then it dry clear. And then I am going to need my foam tape. Hello, foam tape, where's the foam tape? Okay, I have to go find my foam tape. I'll be right back. Okay. I found my phone tape and we're going to create a window now. And then it's a good idea to have a Teflon coated scissors because those tape are so sticky. And then um, we're going to create a window because we are going to seal it. And you kind of just, uh, okay, kind of Try to save the tape if you can. Okay, so just do these. Just kind of around that bird feeder. Okay. And um, okay, just make sure you cut it off. Like I say, sometimes, you know, like my personal myself, I have no patience. Sometimes I watch people tutorial, I say, ah, too long. I just fast forward it. But uh, some people, they like to know every single detail. If you found out some part of a tutorial is a little bit boring, you know, just fast forward it. Okay, so I'm going to just do that. Okay. That's good enough. Okay, make sure you seal it. 
So I found out like here is kind of have some gap just in case we're going to cut one piece extra small one and then nobody going to find it like I say tweezer come handy for the sausage fingers okay so now I seal it okay don't remove the backing yet you are going to put all those uh, shaker stuff first before you put the beads so I found the least Doris from the craft show, but now there's no craft show. But I actually saw they have a Michaels. They have at least a little sequin. I have a too many different color. I have to fix my lighting. This lighting is not what work, work, work well. But I like this one. I have a too many different ones. So when I make a prototype, this is my prototype. I use this seeing through little star. I find it is actually pretty. But I have a lot of gold stars, so I'm going to just use a gold star. Gold star. Okay, so I'm going to put, you don't need a lot, okay? Don't remove that backing yet, because if you remove that backing, when you do that, they will all stuck on your double side foam tape. And then you won't be able to seal it. Okay, now, after you put all your little star, shake a little bit. And then now we can remove the tape. So use a tweezer is a, is a much easier. Okay. So like these. Okay, so I don't think so we are able to do like uh, we are able to traveling for the show for a while. And then we are kind of decide that we are no longer to travel to the shows. So we're going to do the internet only. We will see. But I think at this moment, nobody go, nobody go no, nowhere and the Canadian border is actually closed. Okay, now you are going to put on top. Okay, the trick is when I trimming this acetate, the first, this piece, and the least piece is identical. So when I want to put this one back, I don't guiding with my bird feeder. I am guiding actually with my acetate. So ooh, should be fine. So that way I can make sure they are perfectly lined up. There you go. Oops. Oh. After you put the acetate, make sure you use your finger to seal that foam. And then they actually go everywhere. Okay, and then we are going to just mount it. Okay, put a lot. Of a tape and okay, like this. Does anybody have a puppy? I am actually looking for a puppy to adopt because I'm no longer traveling, right? So I can have a, a puppy. But you know what? I remember my first dog. Um, that was 10 years ago. And now, you know, the dog, I'm looking for adoption. So if anybody know a dog, like a, a little white dog who need a lovely home, please send me a email or message. I'm looking for a dog to adopt. Okay, a dog. Not a kid, <laughs> a talk. Okay, and then I am going to just stamp it. You can do like a happy birthday, anything you like. So I'm going to just leave there. And then actually inside, you can decorate inside too. Why not, right? So, but if you want to decorate inside, you're going to do it first before you glue this one. So this side you can still do it, but this one kind of have a cushion. You are not able to do it. 
Okay, so that's the car and it's shaking and now I'm going to to bring my wax back. Okay, so for the envelope, I'm going to show you I did envelope. Okay, this is my Valon envelope. You can actually stamp in with the die base impact, but after you stamped it, you have to let, let, wait, make sure um, they are dry before you do anything. They take a little bit longer time to dry. But if you have a pigment impact, that works better because I found out like a memento um, impact, I actually bleed a little bit. So, but it's still very pretty. And now I want to show you my glue, hot glue seal. How you, how you work. Remember in the beginning of the tutorial, I'll show you you. Ta-da! Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I am going to peel off my rubber stamp and then I guarantee you it's not going to ruin your stamp. Okay. See, my stamp is still in the perfect shape, right? Is not going to damage your rubber stamp. Rubber stamp, not the clear stamp. Rubber stamp. Can you see this one? Ah, this lighting is horrible. Is a butterfly over there? Let me see if I can find a better. Oh, there you go. See? Okay, you get a butterfly print. I'm gonna fix my. Lighting, this lighting is just horrible. Okay, so I didn't um, stamp it. I didn't put my wax directly on the, on my envelope because I don't want to break the envelope. What you're gonna do is you just peel off, right? Yeah. If you like it, you can actually, you know, Oh, if you are actually doing like a Chinese car, like a Asian, Asian, Asian or Oriental style car, you can, you know, they, they seal it. So you can, if you can find it like a red glue stick, you know, sometimes when they make like beautiful Chinese painting, they always put their name with like a square seal. And I'm sure some of my stamp have that little like a stamp is look like a seal. You can actually add that texture, make it look like a, a really piece of Chinese artwork. So how do you like today's tutorial? I hope it's not long and boring. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. So that's today's tutorial and I am going to working on something else with the same stamp set. So that way you don't have to worry about it. Feel, feel, feel safe to watch my tutorial because it's not going to cost you anything. So this is Lisa from Low Cooking Rubber Stamp and remember if you like my tutorial, give me a thumb up, send me a message, leave me a comment. If you send me a car, I send you a car back. How's that? Okay, so thank you for watching. This is Lisa from Local King Robertson. See you next time. Bye.